Happy Wednesday, everybody. Today, I have a very special guest, Katrina Jade. How are you? I am great. I am so excited to have you here. I've had so many people request you. Really? Yeah, I've gotten a lot of requests to have you on. So they love me other than my butthole. They do love you for other than your butthole. You are more than just a butthole, Katrina. (laughs) You are so much more than that. I hope you know that. (laughs) So, Katrina, how are you? (laughs) I know I just asked you that. I wasn't going to ask you that. And then I don't know what happened. This podcast is starting off really well. You make me nervous, clearly. Why? I don't know, because you're hot. What? <laughs> I'm nervous. Oh, know. wow. This is, this is going to go great. <laughs> oh, man. So you are a contract star with Evil Angel. Yes. You are a recipient of the Performer of the Year Award. And you are an overall, I would say, superstar. Uh, How long have you been in the industry now? Uh, over four years. I haven't done the exact math. Yeah, I think I'm about to hit the five year mark. Is it I every think next is it, early next year? I'll hit five years. Is it everything that you thought it would be? I don't know what happened. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's like every time I like have plans and I set goals for myself. But I all I'm an impulsive person, and I just go with like day by day, mm-hmm. and then I don't know where life takes me half the time. <laughs> it's like it's like that really cheesy line: "Life happens when you're making other plans." Basically, yeah, yeah. It's it's very true. Yeah, it's very true. <laughs> um, how did you get into porn then? Was so was it kind of a surprise? Was it like a mistake? Kind of <laughs> mistake. Was it a mistake? Oh, Irrevocable mistake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. Okay. So I never really planned. I'm like, I want to be a porn star. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't about money or like, I want to be a porn star. It, like anything like that. I mm-hmm. literally was. I was watching Kink.com actually, and mm-hmm. I watched it vigorously, and mm-hmm. I was obsessed. Yeah. And I I never tried anything like that. And like I've done stuff at home, but I never like went to sex clubs or okay experienced it professionally. Right. And I was living in Tahoe at the time, and there's there's nothing in Tahoe. Yeah. So I told Nigel, my husband, and I was like, hey, like, I really want to try to go to kink.com, and I want to experience this. I want to do all these things, you know, like, safely, because mm-hmm. I don't really know much about it. Right. And I wanted to try everything. I went in with the mindset, like, I want no limits. Mm-hmm. I wanted to try everything and see what my limits were. Right. And uh, how experienced were you were, how experienced were you at home with, like, like what kind of stuff had you you and Nigel done at home? Just like bondage, I feel okay. like just a very basic. Okay, nothing crazy. St- like no like caning more... or like breath play or anything like that. Okay, well yes, so breath play, um, a lot of bondage or like peeing stuff, mm-hmm. blindfolding. Like a, he would have like people come and fuck me. He'd be like he would just walk in and just say, "I'm totally going off topic now," but yeah, he okay. would just walk in and say like, "Put put on something sexy. Somebody's gonna come over and fuck you." I'd be like, "Okay." <laughs> and like I didn't even know I would blindfold not even know who it was. Wow. Because it's like kind of my thing. Like I I don't know why, but it's I it's I don't know if it's like a rape fantasy. Yeah. I'm not really sure what it is, but there's something wrong in my head to where I like not knowing who's fucking me. Or maybe there's something right in your head. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean it's wrong. It yeah. Just means it's different than other people, but that doesn't yeah. make it wrong. Yeah. I had a sex therapist on last week and I'm very Yay. I'm very much get about um, you know, how everybody has their thing and there's not necessarily anything wrong with that. And it's yeah. about society telling you that it's wrong. <laughs> Fuck society. Fuck society, but it doesn't mean it's wrong. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> so Would you take the blindfold afterwards and off afterwards and see who it was? No. Or would you like I know I don't want to know. Like even till till this day, our like we still even when we fight or be like, I hate you, die. Like, we'd never wow. even talk about I that. honestly think that's kind of hot. I Actually, like I think that's knowing. super hot. I'm, yeah, I think, I'm yeah. Like, who, what does he look like? What does he look like? Like, I like the kink of, like, what if I'm going to the grocery store and the guy walks past me? Yeah. And he knows he fucked me, but I don't. Right. So it's like, every time I go out, I'm like, that guy fuck me? Did this guy Because <laughs> <laughs> it's happened so many times. Wow, that's incredible. Okay, so you already had, like, a penchant for having yes. sex with strangers. Okay, yes, so that's was, a- that was, like, my thing. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so then I, I really wanted to do, like, S&M, like, mm-hmm. hardcore stuff, just... Just I don't know. I was like so intrigued, and I needed it. Mm-hmm. And at the time, I was super submissive. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I applied. I shot a couple of scenes, and I was like, I had no issue with cameras or random people like watching or anything. Mm-hmm. I was so like into it. Mm-hmm. And we had me and Nigel had like a joint like Tumblr, like just being mm-hmm. nasty, you mm-hmm. know. 
And we had like 30,000 followers on there. Mm-hmm. Just like for fun. Never right. took it seriously. Like mm-hmm. just it was cool. And then I don't know, like a lot of directors at Kink and like other people, they're like, you're good at this. Like you should really do this, you know, like if you care for it, you mm-hmm. know, and you have a natural talent, you're comfortable, why not? You're a great model. So you know like, how to move in front of the camera. Were you a dancer at one point? Never. I've never been a dancer. Wow. So how did you, are you just like, you just have great body awareness. I, I just, I don't know. Well, Nigel actually, he always, even oh, with his Because he's cell a photographer. Phone, yeah, but before yeah. like he just had like a little camera, like mm-hmm. a little $200 camera and he would just be like, do this, do that. Now this looks hot. And he, he also did it for fun. Like he right. liked photography like as a hobby. Right. So I feel like being with somebody who constantly was, he was obsessed with taking photos of me. Yeah. Not like me, but in general, I'm yeah. sorry. And I would tell him sometimes, like, can you like just put the fucking phone down and yeah. like stop taking pictures for once? Yeah. You know? So I think that helped a lot, like instilled in my brain. Right, right, right. Okay. So go on. So you went oh, to kink. Yeah. So um, I just, I don't know. I was like, fuck it. I'm just going to like try regular porn. Yeah. And I want to see what people fuck like. Like yeah. it was all for fun. Right. And then, um, I think my first year, I didn't take anything seriously, mm-hmm. like, career-wise. Mm-hmm. I just really just wanted to fuck and, like, make money and have a good time. And then I realized <laughs> I should probably take this seriously. You and saw then, that you had a career in yeah, it. Yeah, basically. Like, I didn't think it would be anything serious. I right. didn't think I'd be popular. That right. sounds, like, horrible and, like, self-loathing. But I really didn't. Yeah. And then um, I got positive feedback, like, positive reinforcement. So I was like, I'm going to do this. Yeah. And I'm going to take it seriously. Yeah. <laughs> and when when was that point that you decided to take it seriously? I think it was my first year, but it was later in the first year. Okay. Was there like any one incident that made you decide that or was it just an accumulation of everything? I think it was everything. Okay. What was the first scene that you shot for Kink? Do you remember? This is terrible. I honestly don't remember. How many scenes did you shoot? Did you just go out to San Francisco shot, and just shoot like a fuck ton of I shot them five scenes, once? like five days in a row. Oh, wow. But I don't remember which one. Was. No, I don't remember. Okay, that's I, okay. I kind of have an inclination, but I, I really don't. What? Okay, what? can you tell us like what were some of the new things that you tried at Kink that you hadn't done before? Um, and what was that like? Uh, I had... Blah, 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 I... Sh- Oh, I think this. Oh, it was my first scene. Now, okay, I just remembered. Yeah, remember. okay. Um, it was Electro Sluts, and it was a live show. Uh-huh. And I was like in bondage. I wanted to try like real bondage. Uh-huh. I wanted to try the electric shocking, like cattle pro, right? Cattle prod, cattle prod. Yeah, mm-hmm. and then like the tasers and things like that. Mm-hmm. None of it hurt. I mean, some well, of you, them you were sound like, disappointed. <laughs> You're like, none of it hurt. <laughs> no, it didn't. But they were they were really nice to me. Like yeah. they're all women, so they're like super. Like, what about this, honey? You yeah. know, Kink has got a really good reputation for um, really respecting people's limits, yeah. and making sure that people feel comfortable testing their limits yes. and knowing that they can like back out at any time. Yeah, and, like that's really important. I think it was Miss Lorelai. Okay. Lorelei. If, yes. Excuse me, I'm sorry if I said that wrong. It's been a long time. No, I think that's right. But uh, she was great with that. Like, I told her I was new. I was like, I don't know anything about... She's like, this is what you do. And, like, she was really, really great. Like, mm-hmm. there was no pushing. There was right. no pushing the envelope, like, at all. Like, she was really... Right. Positive experience So it me. sounds like you had, like, a really good, like, safe first. Because a lot of times, you know, those those first couple scenes is what, yeah. like sets the stage for you for the rest of your career. You know, some girls who I think probably could have achieved a lot in their career end up leaving right away because they just, they got set up with a bad agent. They got pushed into stuff they weren't ready for. And that's always like such a big shame to me because it should always feel safe. Yeah, of course. Have you always felt that way in your career? No. No. I will say that right off. You've had some bad experiences. I've had some more bad experiences um, in the beginning and then lately. Nothing in the middle. Interesting. Which I found odd. But um, with kink, I never felt like they pushed. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. You know, but I also was in a in this really stubborn set mindset yeah. that I wanted to push my own limits. Right. And they even they told me I was like, I don't have any limits. So like, honey, are you sure? Like they were they didn't like that answer at all. Yeah, yeah. They were like, What do you mean no limits? But I, I told them I was like, I don't know what my limits are and I want to find them. Right. But they still even didn't push it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you do you, what are your limits? do you have limits? Have you found that's, them? That's that's the thing. Um being in King I only shot five scenes. There's mm-hmm. And I shot, like, one of every th- – not everything, but they were all different. Mm-hmm. And I did figure out some things about myself that I didn't – like, I think it's hot, like, a, a dominant woman, like, mm-hmm. like doming another girl. Mm-hmm. So I tried that. Nope. 
No. <laughs> it's not me at all. Okay, you're naturally submissive? No, not not to women. Okay. I, I feel like I have to be equal, like, because I can't, I, it's not in me to be submissive to a woman. Or dominant? I don't really like to hurt women. Okay. I, I respect women a lot more. Okay. You know, so I So you like, like to be, like, on equal footing with it. Equal, okay. yeah. And if she, like, like like is aggressive i will never like want to hit a girl mm-hmm. unless like i know they're gonna hit me back you right know what i mean okay. like I it has to be equal okay you yeah know? positive vibes only <laughs> yeah so you kind of like vibe off the girl like you take the scene goes in a direction depending on what the other girls yeah. like like so if she's a little bit softer more vanilla you're a little bit softer yeah because i like i like pleasing the girl so mm-hmm. if like kiss of sins example like me and her like we can kill each other yeah we'll just go blah, 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 and it's yeah. it's a She's like she's knocked me out like completely like oh I've really been knocked out and she's like hey it's me wake <laughs> up you know and I can hit her all day long but I yeah. know she likes it right like if a girl's like into soft stuff I like and if she seems uncomfortable I immediately want to leave the room I'm like I yeah. don't know what I did like, yeah 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah you never want to feel like you're taking advantage of somebody it just doesn't turn me on and I I respect women a lot more right men okay. it's eh. <laughs> <laughs> So tell me what you mean by that. Do you? I don't know. So you can be submissive to men. Yes. Can you be dominant? Yes. Okay. Do you prefer one or the other? Um, no, not really. I f- it's the vibe okay. and the chemistry with the guy. Yeah, for sure. And it, what, this, I've noticed this too over the years, and even recently. Like, if a dude, if I'm submissive to a guy, I am only submissive to the guy. I can't switch my role with that person. Right. Okay. Understood. At least right now. Maybe I will one day. But right. Like, you've established, like, My some role. kind of hierarchy, yeah, yeah, and you can only... I get that. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I could never... I'm a natural submissive, yeah. and my boyfriend's dominant, and I... The idea of, like, dominating him, like, I don't like that. Right. Like, sometimes we'll do this play where, like, I'll, like, try to dominate him, but then, like, he'll be, like, <laughs> like yeah, okay. punish me for it or something like that. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, so there's like a little bit of like this playful power exchange, mm-hmm. but ultimately like he wins in the end. Yeah. But you know, if he was like, you know, I want to do a whole thing where you tie me up and like you beat me and it's fuck me in the ass switch. with a toy, I'd be like, ah, yeah. no, never. Yeah. yeah. I love you. Yeah. yeah. No, don't yeah. ever ask me to do that. Me and Nigel struggled with that for a long time because we're both switches. Okay. And for, I want to say for at least two years, I wouldn't switch. I was like, I no. I can't see Nigel being. He's not like full. Submissive. He's such a big know. dude. I know. He's so, like a Viking. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Large human. Yeah. So I wouldn't do it. And he would get mad at me. He's like, I need you to like push it a little bit. Like, yeah. Because he's mostly dominant. Uh-huh. And sometimes once in a blue moon, he's like, I kind of want you to be mean to me a little bit. I'm yeah. I'm like, What? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but it's like it's only with his moods you know what I mean right so that's where we struggled a lot like okay. I feel like the first two years because yeah. you know you're like getting to know someone like right. the honeymoon phase and right 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 how long have you guys been together now five years five years because we met and then I wanted to get into porn right like, immediately right right it's so funny <laughs> I know this is random but um so just so everybody knows Katrina and I um were both at Danny Daniel's wedding <laughs> <laughs> and um, we went to this like horrible strip club for her bachelorette party, and I don't know Nigel like the song Despacito had just come oh, out. Oh God! And he was so into that song, He's so annoying. And now every time I hear that song to this day, I think of Nigel when wow. I hear Despacito. I always think of him. I so. just remember being really mad at him. Oh, yeah, we. I didn't talk to him that whole. No, you the didn't. whole trip. Yeah, we I even remember. got separate hotel rooms. Yeah, I remember that. You guys were the same tail, and you weren't talking. <laughs> we didn't. I didn't talk to Nigel the entire time, and then the only time I did write him, which is this is so funny. Actually, that night I drank like they gave me like a big gulp version of gin and tonic. Uh huh. And I drank the whole thing. And I died. That's why I wasn't there the That's next why day. you weren't the next day at the, at the tea party, the yeah. hat tea party. I know. And I, I was so excited about a hat. I bought a whole outfit for it because I love tea. And I love tea parties. Really? I fucked myself on it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I, I know this sounds terrible, but you don't look like someone who's into tea parties. I love tea parties. Really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. I kind of I kind of want to do you in like a gothic tea party now. Yeah. That, that's why I was going to wear all black and a big black hat and the glasses. Oh, was so, I, Do you still I, have the outfit? Well, I mean, yeah, because everything is black anyway, but... Do you still have the hat? Yes. Okay. Oh, we, we might have to do that. That'd oh be fucking God. rad. I was so excited. I fucked myself on it. That's but okay. anyways, I end up... The only time that I started speaking to Nigel was because I wrote him when I was hungover. Uh-huh. I was so hungover, I questioned, like, myself. I was like, 
who does this? You know, like I was so <laughs> I was so bad. And I wrote him. I was like, hey, I know we're not friends right now, but can you help me? He's like, what the fuck? I was like, I can't move. Can you bring me Gatorade? And he did. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, when we, that's why at the actual like wedding we came together because he like swooned in and saved my hangover oh <laughs> because he loves you so tell me how you met him because that is kind of a funny story i think uh, it's so embarrassing it's great because you'd think it'd be something romantic and it's totally not i know but that's why it's funny <laughs> i uh so when instagram first was a thing um, I was looking up split tongue, like mm-hmm. guys with split tongue, girls, with, cause I love the split tongue. It's like a huge thing of mine. Mm-hmm. I actually wanted to get mine done at one point, but I'm, I'm a pussy and I, I won't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can imagine. So for those of you who don't know, a split tongue is when you literally cut the end of your tongue in half. So you have like a snake like tongue with like yeah. two, two edges, but, and, and you still have muscle control over yeah. those, right? Yeah. Some people can do tricks and like move them up and down and they cut like this bottom webbing of your tongue too. So you can stick it out farther and do more with them. How long does it take to heal from that? And like, what's the healing process? Um, I don't, I mean, I don't have my done, so I don't really know. I know but, but Nigel like, said it took like, like a few months. But then he did his twice, and I know another what? guy who did it, and he's going to get it done a third time. Because the tongue is a muscle, and it, like, grows back together, like, in mm. your sleep. So you have to peel it apart every day. Ah! I know it's gross. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> so I thought it was hot, and I still think it's hot. I mean, back then it was new, and I never experienced but it. But wait, so. okay, I'm sorry. I know that, like, you didn't get your tongue done, but I just need to know, like, do you have to wear a bandage, like, in They, his they suture it, yeah. Oh, they suture it. Yeah. And so, then, then I heard they cauterize it, too. Okay. And then do you – can you only, like, drink, like – how do you eat? I, th- I mean, I haven't asked – we haven't had this conversation in years, but I think he mentioned, like, liquids for, like, a while. Yeah. That's a good way to go. Because he diet. couldn't – Yeah. <laughs> I can't remember. Okay. I haven't sorry. even asked him this in, like, years. Okay. <laughs> sorry. I just, like, to me, it's so fascinating. Okay. So go on. So uh, you yeah. were interested in the split tongue. You yeah. were looking it up on Instagram. I was looking at hashtags. So it pulls up, you know, random people. Yeah. And I was like, who's – and he kept popping up over and over because he, like, literally hashtagged every photo. So I was like, he's hot. And I was like, this guy's crazy. And I was uh-huh. like, what the – he's wild, you know? And yeah. I was like, I either want to fuck him or marry him because I was like, he's – like, I, I was, like, into him. Like, because all of his posts were, like – ridiculous they're you know so I mean? ridiculous and you they know? were ridi- they were more ridiculous back then yeah like he, back then he was like videoing on instagram him peeing on people <laughs> and then like his account would be gone and then it would pop back up again i'm like what's going on like, yeah he's it's funny because my boyfriend follows him and he <laughs> just thinks he's hilarious everybody thinks he's hilarious yeah. except me <laughs> <laughs> well you know that's typical that's marriage <laughs> yeah exactly so i i just like followed him and then he sent me his phone number mm-hmm. and we just, like, talked 24-7 for, like, two weeks. Like, FaceTimed, like, because I immediately wanted to make sure he's, like, a real person. Yeah. But I followed him, so I knew, like, he was consistently, like, that yeah. person. Yeah. But we FaceTimed. He, like, sent me videos of, like, everybody, like, he lived with and, like, all this stuff. Like, mm-hmm. 24-7. Wow. And then two weeks later, I moved in. Wow. Yeah. And you guys have been together ever since? Yeah. Like, the fr- well, the day I met him is the day I moved in. Like, physically met him. I, like, was there with a car full of stuff. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Are you okay? You're an impulsive person. I'm a very that. impulsive person. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I have face tattoos and everything. I didn't think anything through. Wow. It's my whole life. That's amazing. So, um, you won uh, contract, uh, contract. You won <laughs> performer of the girl of the year. Okay. That was for AVN, right? Oh, no. Or was that for Expos? Expos, yeah. And that was what, two years ago? Yes. And I remember you were really, um, I remember you posted this really sweet video online and you were really sweet and you were I'm like, so no, but it was so touching because you were like, everybody said that I was never going to make it because I have a face tattoo, yeah. which is unusual. Yeah. Um, but you did. So did that like really, so that was like a big moment for you. It was. And I, okay. So I didn't think I was going to win, you mm-hmm. know, cause I'm just inherently negative, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like, no, I'm not like, dude, no. Like again, like I didn't even think I would be successful cause I'm just like doing my thing. Yeah. And then um, I got nominated. The, actually, when I got nominated for AVN, I cried. For Expos, I cried. I was like, no. Nah. 
about people <laughs> like me. I was like, I'm not going to win. No, not me. Because there's a lot of companies to this day will not hire me for anything, not even as a, anything. So yeah. I thought like it's out of the question. Right. So then when I won, I actually like was really drunk. Mm-hmm. I was like borderline blacked out. I don't even know how I was walking in my heels. Like, I don't know. And Nigel actually told me, he's like, you need to stop drinking. What if you win? You need, like, he's the yeah. dad. Yeah. You know, he's like, yeah. stop. I was like, go get me another drink. He's like, no. <laughs> like, he was, like, protesting, like, I'm not getting you another drink. Yeah. And then when I won, I was, like, in shock. I was, like, wait, me? No. And I looked at him. He's, like, I told you to stop <laughs> drinking. I was, like, shit, now what do I do? I don't even have a speech ready. I was, like, every other word was fuck. And I panicked. <laughs> yeah, but it was really endearing. Yeah. It was very sweet. But I didn't cry until after because I didn't want to cry on stage. And I felt okay. I was, like, fuck yeah, I did a thing. And then when I got down, I started crying. When I got off the stage, I was like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> this is happening. <laughs> that is so sweet. So is there anything about you that your fans don't know? I'm actually a pretty calm person. And a lot of fans think I like run around causing chaos a lot mm-hmm. or in, like explosive. And I am very vocal. I talk a lot and I'm very opinionated, but I'm a pretty chill person. A lot of people don't think I am Mm. like when I meet them they're like you're more like calm than I thought you would be I'm like did you think I was a psychopath like yeah and it's always been that way well I think because you know people see you pretty much just in your scenes which are pretty intense yeah so you know they don't ever really get to talk to you like like we are now yeah you know and like a sit down conversation I always try to be funny too and make like weird videos like big hey I'm like screaming and yeah being ridiculous but it's like nobody wants to see a video of me chilling so why would i post that (laughs) right you know that's true that's true (laughs) it's not entertaining yeah yeah yeah. i get that um now you're under a contract with evil angel right yes and you just did a showcase katrina jade addicted to black yeah so tell me about that uh it's all black guys Mm -hmm. (laughs) i wouldn't have guessed (laughs) (laughs) so it's uh all black guys and um what was I going to say? I was going to say something and then I lost it. It's like my words just went out of my mouth. But um, anal, mm-hmm. obviously. Like I didn't – here's the thing. I didn't want to like – how do I start this? How do I reword everything? Pertaining to the industry politics of holding out for shooting with a black guy, mm-hmm. I've always been anti that. Right. So when I first got into my contract with Evil, I told them right off the bat. I was like, I am not – going to just wait to like shoot with black guys i want to make that apparent like because i didn't know if they had a game plan for me you know what i mean i told them what i wanted yeah and i just kind of wanted to like kind of like a big fuck you to like that whole thing yeah you you don't want to like fetishize the whole thing yeah so i'm just like you know what let's make a movie entirely of black guys and they're like all right you know what i mean yeah and i didn't i wanted to do it right away too like as at a point you know right and yes. but oh I'm um, sorry. I am it's directed by Johnny Darko. Mm-hmm. He's the camera god. He's like my favorite, one of my ultimate favorites to work for. Yeah. Because he's like so into it. Like he's one of the only directors left that gets into the sex. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like he's like he's into like the art of it and like, watching it. Mm-hmm. You know, he's a pervert. Mm-hmm. And that's why I love him to death. So yeah. and I have the comfortability in my head of knowing like no matter what I do, even if I feel uncomfortable. It, I'm going to look good yeah. because he's holding that camera. Right, right, right. So I yeah, always feel important. like I can do whatever mm-hmm. and he'll either correct me on whatever I'm doing wrong or mm-hmm. doesn't look good. He's like, honey, when you lean too far up or do this, mm-hmm. this doesn't look good. Do this. He's like, I know it's uncomfortable, but this looks good. And mm-hmm. a lot of directors don't do that. Mm-hmm. So Yeah, that's true. They don't give you direction. Yeah. Yes. So it's directed by Johnny Darko, who's camera god. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, the the I'm losing my words because I'm getting excited. <laughs> <laughs> How many scenes are in it? Uh, the, I don't know. It's on my head. So there's a blow bang. It's my second blow bang. Okay. My first one is all black black guys too. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never done a blow bang with all white dudes. <laughs> so there's a blow so bang. So there's some things you haven't done. Yeah. Now that I think about it right now, um, there's a blow bang. There is uh, two um, boy girl scenes with anal. And mm-hmm. then there's a boy boy girl anal scene, which was like probably one of the best days of my life. Oh really? Yeah. Who was that with? It was with um, Jack Slayer and Rob Piper. 
So uh, they just took turns on my butthole. And, like, usually if I start anal, I don't like going to pussy. Uh-huh. Like, I like, yeah. just only anal. Right, right, Only right. anal. Right, Because, right, right. It, I don't know, it's a different thing for me in my head. Yeah. But it was so good. Yeah. Like, those boys killed it. Like, I felt like I was in heaven. I was even intimidated, like, because they're both, like, Jax and Rob are big dudes, yeah. like, built, muscular yeah. dudes. Mm-hmm. And they're tall, so I was like... <gasps> Like, yeah. I kind of, like, fluttered a little bit. I was like, am I going to die? But in, like, a sexual way, you know? Yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. like, oh, fuck. And me and me and Jax had a killer scene right before that. Mm-hmm. And I've always loved Rob. Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> this is too good. <laughs> like, I work with Rob Piper for my first time yesterday. I shot him with uh, Lisa Ann. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. evil, too. Yeah. Yeah. Him and uh, Isaiah Maxwell for I love Lisa. Isaiah. Yeah, she's great. She's great. It was a really good scene. Lisa was so funny. Like, I haven't seen Lisa, like, that excited in such a long time. She was just, like, so she was, like, she even Rob's emailed so me. Hot. Yeah, he is. He's very hot. And it's so funny. Our makeup artist, Ozzy, is, like, so, like, she loves him. <laughs> and so it was just this hilarious day. And I love Isaiah Maxwell. Like, to me, he's, like, so fucking he's handsome. He's a dreamboat. Such a dreamboat. Like, and just so sweet, like, soft-spoken. Yeah. And just, like, I like, I like kind of, like, the quiet guys. Like. Because they're scarier. Uh, yeah, oh. maybe. I don't know. I, maybe because I'm so fucking loud. But, me too. Um, yeah. yeah, I like like the quiet guys. And to me, like, I just think Isaiah is so sexy. And so, like, the two of them, and they both, like, smelled really good. They always smell they, good. Oh, I remember, like, I hugged both of them after the scene, like, after they'd taken their shower and, like, you know, and, and put all their cologne back on and stuff. And I remember driving home in my van, and I'm like, I smell like them. Yeah. <laughs> the thing about black dudes, like, why do you like black guys so much? I'm like, they always smell good. They always look good. Like, there's just, there's, yeah, There's nothing wrong with this. Like. Yeah, we were talking to, um, we were talking about like how Rob had like all these like different products like, that <laughs> he brought. Like they're just very big on grooming and yeah. like meticulous about all of that. And their skin's and, like, always soft and glistening and mm-hmm. all chocolatey. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, no, Rob was great. That was my first time working with him, and he was awesome. I really liked him. Yeah. And you know, it's funny that uh, Jax. I've only ever, I've never worked, I haven't worked with him yet. Um, but uh, I'm, I'm sure I probably will soon. Um, but I only ever saw him in that fucking Hot Girls Wanted episode where he was brand new and the photographer was really aggressive Aww. and like really unkind to him. And he was like having kind of a hard time because like he wanted him to be really aggressive with the girl and like, no. like he wasn't comfortable with it. It was just like this really like, and I remember like feeling like my heart going out to him. I was like, I can't believe that this guy is talking He's to like him that way. He's like the nicest guy ever. That's what he, and that's how he came across in the documentary. He was like, you know, and this, this photographer, some guy in Florida. I don't asshole. know who he is. You're an asshole. Yeah, literally, he was like, <laughs> he was like, okay, get hard. Are you hard right now? Get super hard. Hurry up and get hard. I'm like, you can't talk to male talent like that. Ew. Like they, you know, it's a difficult job. Like you have to respect them. Like how is he going to get your, his dick hard his, when you're an asshole? When you're, exactly. You're like yelling at him and he was just like this little like, uh, I don't know. It was really bad and I just felt for him and, and, you know, and clearly he did the scene and everything, but he was like, this is when he was brand new and he was like, dude, what the fuck? And he's the nicest poor guy ever. And he has like such, like, I know this is like a weird thing to say, but I was, my mom's from the South. So Mm -hmm. I'm like, my mom was really big on manners, but that, that dude has a lot of uh, manners, like actual manners. I was like, Wow. Who are you? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Like in general. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like the nicest guy. Who are some of your favorite performers to work with? Oh, there's so many. The more aggressive ones, I would feel like. Mm-hmm. Um, not pertaining to Jax, because he wasn't, he actually wasn't really rough with me, but he fucked hard. Yeah. And he like manhandled me, and I was like, because I'm like a, th- I'm short, but mm-hmm. I'm a thicker girl. Mm-hmm. So I always get nervous when the dudes are smaller than me. I'm like, when they throw me around, I'm like, are yeah. you going to drop me? Yeah, you yeah, know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. You want to feel like they're strong and they can hold you. Yeah. I like yeah. big dudes, obviously. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but um, yeah, Jax, Rob, Isaiah, Prince. Mm-hmm. Prince is like... Has Prince done that crazy blowjob backflip trick with you? No, not with me. Uh, you've seen it though, right? I have, but it would scare me, I think. It scares the fucking shit out of me. I, yeah, I would. I remember when he did it. For, he did it in front of me once when I was shooting him. Uh, I was shooting for Angela White. Yeah. And I was like, what are you doing? I'm like, I don't know uh. if my workers' comp covers like a broken <laughs> neck because of blowjob somersault. I was like, yeah. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was terrifying. I love him. Yeah, he's great. I'm like the most submissive to him. Yeah. Not, I mean, not in the world, but I'm saying I'm old. It's hard not to be. He's a very strong personality. Yeah. 
Yeah, exactly. And yeah. I respect that. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. Yeah, so yeah he definitely says what he thinks. There's him. There's, and now I'm going to feel like an asshole. But there's a lot of like, I mean, I'm the, like the main top talents. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's so many. <laughs> yeah, I know. I totally understand. Um, so now Evil Angel is a company. Um, mm-hmm. You like working for them? I love them. Yeah. I, I have a love and hate. And the only hate is that they've spoiled me so hard. Mm that when I shoot for other companies or the directors, uh, if it's even slightly off, if they breathe wrong, I'm like, how dare you? Like, <laughs> this is not right. You know? Yeah. What is it about, like, how do they spoil you? Kind of. Uh, well, I mean, when they when they signed me, they made it, like, such a big deal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of companies don't do that. Mm-hmm. I know there's, like, contract girls, like, for almost every company at this mm-hmm. point. But they just made it so special, mm-hmm. you know, and I wasn't, I wasn't expecting that. I'm like, oh, I'm a contract girl, like, cool. Mm-hmm. But they were like, they made it a thing, mm-hmm. you know. So I was like, oh, shit, you like me? <laughs> you really like me? And Aww. it was always, they've never been pushy. Mm-hmm. They've never been like, we want you to do this. Mm-hmm. Like, even like at, at the office, you know, mm-hmm. like, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Everything was yes. Like, everything I asked them initially, what about this? What about that? Like, I don't want to, like, change my whole personality Mm -hmm. on social media. Like, it's already done. I've been here for a few years, and I've had companies, like, if you shoot for us, and if we do this, you can't do this, that, and this. I'm like, but that wouldn't make sense. My fans would know that there's something wrong. Right, right. You know, it's inconsistent. There's definitely been contract girls that I've talked to that have worked for certain companies where they've like tried to micromanage them on social they media they and do. tell them like what they can post and what pictures they can post and what yeah. they can say and how they can behave and and every girl's always resented it. Yeah. I I've, I've had I've had that and they're like you can't post peeing videos. We don't like this and we don't like that and I'm like dude, like that's the only reason why I got popular to begin with. You yeah, know it's I mean? like, like why would you sign you? I mean, I assume, for not me, for not you. Yeah. yeah, I assume you sign somebody because you like who they are, exactly. what they represent, so and then you confusing. ask them to not be themselves. Yeah, it's like that boyfriend who, like, yeah. you know, gets with you because he's like likes, and then he's like, now don't be anything like who you were when we met. Exactly, that's exactly how it was, and they were never like like that at all. Everything I asked them was like, whatever you want. That was like the answer to every question. I was like, I don't know how to, how do you say no to whatever you want all the time? Yeah, yeah. So there was that. And then secondly, on set with the directors, I've never, like, they are, like, hardcore anal scenes, you know, like, they get, Mm -hmm. they're all about being nasty. And they've never, not a single director has ever pushed the envelope. They're Mm -hmm. always, like, the most professional. The sets are always clean. They respect the dudes. They're not pressuring. It's, like, it's always great. Mm -hmm. Anything I need. I'm, like, hey, uh, like, for anal, I'm, like, I have to eat. And a lot mm-hmm. of girls don't eat, so that like directors don't expect that. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, hey, I, I need to eat, you know, or else I'll pass out. Mm-hmm. And they're like, totally, yes, yeah. <laughs> everybody, it's interesting how everybody's got like their different like anal like method. You yeah. know, some girls eat, some girls don't eat. Yeah, like everybody's got their thing. What's mm-hmm. your What's your anal preparation? Well, okay, I wouldn't use me as an example because my digestion is not normal mm. at all, and I'm lactose intolerant or dairy sensitive i'm not really sure but Mm -hmm. all i know is any kind of butter things that are sauteed things like that will fuck up my whole life so the Mm -hmm. day before i really pay attention to like anything that's cooked in stuff Mm -hmm. or sauces i like Mm -hmm. plain foods no sauces or anything Mm -hmm. like that but i mean i don't starve myself i just obviously i don't need salad Mm -hmm. anything leafy um fiber i drink coffee in the morning so you know why wouldn't you eat anything fiber no, I that, do eat fiber. You do eat fiber, yeah. but you don't eat lettuce. Yeah, because it's leafy and it's more likely to get stuck and like not in come out. In your colon. Yeah. Okay, got yeah, it, got yeah, it, yeah. got it. Or anything that's like with a skin to it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. See, these are things I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like uh, seasonings, like little green things or like tomatoes, stuff like that. Really? Like, I mean, I've never had an issue to where like stuff has come off, uh-huh. like things like that, but I've heard horror stories. Yeah. So I just naturally, yeah. you know, I was like, okay, well, we don't do that. Yeah. And then Joanna, Joanna Angel is like one of my closest friends. And she also is like, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do this. <laughs> like, make sure she do actually this. turned me on because yeah. I was dating a guy once who like had a really big dick and always wanted to have anal. <laughs> and she turned me on to this like fiber yeah, yeah, drink yeah. thing. I forgot what it's called, Psyllium. but I still have it. Yeah. 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 So I was like, thanks, Joanna. Yeah. yeah. She's the one who's like told me like all the things not to eat. And it's fucked up. And I told, I actually told somebody else this. It was actually on Danny's, Danny's show, mm. Dinner with Danny. Okay. 
that she, Joanna is the only girl that's ever helped me with that kind of stuff. Like, really? other girls, I'd ask them, they're like, oh, I don't really know. Like, I don't know. Or they'd blow me off. Like, mm-hmm. nobody was, like, nice. I'm like, girl. Nobody wanted to help you with your anal game. No. Yeah. And I'm like, I'm not <laughs> asking you to stretch out my butthole. I'm not asking <laughs> how to shoot it. I'm literally asking dietary questions. Like, yeah. strictly dietary. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Girls, and nobody wanted to help me. Like, not even my own friends that I thought were my friends, except Joanna. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Joanna is like the anal queen. She knows Dude, a lot. Dude, totally. Yeah. She's told me some stories. I'm like, you're alive. <laughs> wow. <laughs> like, yeah, she's awesome. I love Joanna. She's a lot of fun. Um, so, tell, so you have a lot of fans. Um, you have a lot of loyal, dedicated fans. Have you ever had any fans that have crossed the line with you? Um, I've had some weird experiences. Um I mean, back in the day when I first started, I actually had somebody follow me and Nigel. Oh, no. And the guy actually tried to run past Nigel to get to me. Like, because I knew who the guy was and he crossed the line before. Like, he was just rude. Mm -hmm. You know, like, he would call me names. Like, was he a fan, like, on social media or like? He was just like a stalker in general. Like, he always would write me and, like, Mm -hmm. call or something. Like, he would somehow, like, find a way to write me. Mm -hmm. And he would talk in accents sometimes. I don't know. It was weird. It was just a soccer situation, but mm-hmm. one time he did find us. And, wow. Yeah. But Nigel just had to scare him away, and then... I bet Nigel scared time. him away. Yeah. Dude, I wouldn't want to fuck with that guy. He didn't... I mean, Nigel's not a violent dude, but, no, like... No, I know, but he's he so does have a, big. He does snap. He looks scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure, obviously, if somebody was trying to hurt you... Yeah. I'm sure that he would uh, do something about that. I had that happen, and then um, at AVN, some weird shit has happened. Not horrible, like, mm-hmm. traumatizing, but just... Like, what the fuck, bro? Yeah. <laughs> like, I had a dude, actually, this last weekend at the Evil Booth, I took off my heels because mm-hmm. I'm just like, fuck it. Yeah. And then I was like in this I don't weird... even wear heels to AVN anymore, yeah. like to the floor. I wear flats because fuck that shit, dude. Oh, dude. So, and you're like standing all day yeah. and signing, so I can imagine that it must be, yeah, I painful. I think it was like my third day. Mm-hmm. But I was just like, you know what, fuck it. And I was also in this weird, like, aggressive mood where I was like, I want to put my feet in people's faces. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I've done, like, some foot fetish stuff before because I have, like, tiny feet. Mm-hmm. And this dude, like, I guess it was, like, a good thing, too. I was like, I don't know how I pulled that one off. But, like, a lot of people were into it. They're like, oh, my God, your feet, your feet, your feet. Mm-hmm. It was, like, a thing. I was like, oh, all right, cool. I, like, I did something positive. Mm-hmm. And then this dude's like, Can, do you mind if I kiss your feet? Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, do it. He shoved my whole foot in his mouth. This dude oh. deep throated my foot. Ew. I, I know. I was viol- I felt like I was foot raped. <laughs> like, I felt so violated. I was like, I did not. Like, he just was like, went to kiss it. He's like, can I kiss your foot? I'm like, yeah, kiss my fucking feet, bitch. <laughs> and he shoved my whole, like, it went to my heel. Like, my like I felt his teeth and everything. Ugh. And, it, like, the back of his throat. It was so bad. Like, Ugh. I've never felt so violated, to be honest with you. Like, That's that really was like. <laughs> I looked back at everybody. I was like, this just happened to me. <laughs> he did this. <laughs> that was uncomfortable. Yeah, that sounds like it. Yeah. Yeah. Those avians, I, I don't know how you guys do that. Like, I mean, multiple days in a row, standing there, and then, like, hugging guys. Yeah. And a lot of them, like, are really bad with the hygiene. Yeah, they're not the most hygienic sometimes. No. I don't understand. No. But it is really hot in there. Like, mm-hmm. I've noticed they're all sweaty, and I'm like, yeah, that sucks. But I'm um, wear deodorant. Yeah. And then, like, I don't know. I'm like, I'm I'm really fun. Like, I like to, like, have fun with fans, mm-hmm. especially, like, the timid, quiet ones, like you said. Mm-hmm. But when guys just walk up to me and, like, pull a titty, like, I'm like, dude. Yeah. Like, that's when I want to get violent. But yeah. I'm like, I can't smack somebody because I'll be banned from AVN. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I don't really know what to do. I know. The thing is, is that, I mean, not, like, everybody has their thing. But, you know, some of the girls, like, really encourage the fans to, like, grope them and stuff like that. And then the fans think that they can go do that to everybody. Yeah. So that's where I get confused, too. Because I like, again, I like to have fun with them. Like, usually if the dudes are, like, standing with their arms to their side, I'll grab them and be like, crap my ass or something. But if they just, like, go out and grab it or if they ask, if they ask, it's okay. Yeah. But... If they just, like, grab me, like, aggressively, yeah. then it's, like, I get mad. Yeah, So yeah, it's, yeah. like, I don't even know what kind of tone I'm setting anymore. Like, it's right. very confusing. Yeah, I know. I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, I've noticed that they had, like, a, a rule, actually, like, a little, like, rule thing at AVM yeah. last year. I liked that. Yeah, I thought that was good. Because some, the, some of them get out of hand. And I think some of them just don't know 
first of all, honestly, I think a lot of them don't know how to treat a woman. No. And um, <laughs> they get especially confused with porn stars because they yeah. see you guys in Oh, these, you're a whore? Yeah, so exactly. Exactly. They see you guys like, you know, being violated in these professional environments. They don't understand it's in a professional, safe environment yeah. with other professionals that, you know, everything has been discussed beforehand and they just think that like they can act in that manner. I've noticed too, like since I've gotten into porn, I used to have like a lot of guy friends and like know a lot of guys in motorcycle clubs and it's like once I got into porn they got handsy with me like whenever I'd see them they're mm. like oh what like you fuck everybody but not me I'm yeah. your friend and it's like it's almost like they think oh we're your whore so it's community pussy in right. a way like anybody can have this it's like you almost can't say no it's like they think yeah they feel entitled entitled yeah, yeah. it's really weird I'm like what yeah like I can't say no I'm like officially not a person now I don't get it yeah it's really weird. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate, but I think a lot of people see porn that way and see porn girls yeah, that way. Yeah, it's like we, we say yes or no on right. the porn set. Yeah. Yeah, but I think <laughs> – I wonder if it's too because they don't – they don't see that interaction. They you should. Know? Not not that they would fucking watch it anyways. Yeah. I mean, they fa- let's let's be real. They fast forward through the acting intro. I know like I does Kink do it, but I I think they do. Um where they sh- where they have a little interview with the girl before the scene. Before and after they do. T- yeah. Talking about what she's going to do, what she's okay with, whatever. Yeah. And then afterwards saying how the scene was like kind of like just to show that this is a fantasy and that um you know these girls That's like good. weren't violated. A and- lot of a lot of I mean, as you already know this, but I don't know if people know this, but they they do that on set, like mm-hmm. like sign in and sign out, yeah, for legal reasons. But they don't put it on the internet for people to see, right, right. You right. know, but we did this for for Evil for my first showcase. I am Katrina. It was like a documentary, so like they, they do that. I've noticed yeah. that they've done that with other showcases too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but they show like the whole interaction, like mm-hmm. in makeup and at the end, like so they know like what it's like a day in life on set. That it's completely consensual and we are like, you know, we're the boss of our own body. You yeah. Know what I mean? And I think that's really interesting to people because, you know, so many people are fascinated by porn and they don't know what actually happens behind the yeah, scenes. Yeah, they should know. And it's always like a huge surprise to them that it's like kind of a normal job, <laughs> you know? Like, yeah. which I which I understand. I mean, it must seem strange. What do you too. mean? You didn't meet this stranger and fuck him and film it with a professional crew. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, well, I guess the idea is that we're supposed to, you know, suspend disbelief and make it look like it's real. And that's what sells. But it's it's not, people. It's We're making movies here. Movie magic. Damn it. It's a fantasy. <laughs> <laughs> with actual sex. Right. <laughs> Um, so another thing that, um, I've seen you be kind of vocal about on Twitter is, um, anti-bullying. Yes. So do you see that that is something that's become like an issue these days? And do you get like a lot of trolls? I do. I, I mean, I've always gotten trolls like a sp- pertaining to tattoos, like, mm-hmm. oh, fucked up druggy face tattoos, mm-hmm. jailhouse tattoos, the whole thing. Yeah. Oh, you on heroin today? Like, I've gotten a lot of that. And I'm like, mm-hmm. actually, I've never had a drug problem. Yeah. I've had drinking problems, but I've never had, like, a drug. Well, you know what I mean? Does. It's like, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you have the same hate, and it's like some girls, like, I even had my days, like, I wake up and it's a bad day for me. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, I'm emo today. And if mm-hmm. I read some shit like that, I'm like, fuck you. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's not fa- fair. Like, I just feel like it's mean, but um, I'm especially, like, sensitive to it because I was bullied a lot as a kid. Mm. Mostly when, like, my, my grade years. Mm-hmm. Not necessarily in high school. So I, like, developed early. Like, I got boobs when I was nine. Oh, wow. I had my period when I was nine, so I immediately got boobs. Like, in the third grade, I had a C cup. Wow. You know? So then I got really bad acne, and I was a tomboy. Mm -hmm. So I didn't... I wasn't really into this girl stuff that was really going on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so all I had was a ponytail and some, like, boy clothes, but I had boobs and had really bad acne, and it was just not cool. (laughs) Yeah. So I got bullied a lot by, like, girls and boys, because boys are like, what are boobs when you're 10 years old? Yeah. And then girls were like mad because boys are giving me attention and I just didn't understand any of it. Right. So it made me really angry growing up, like really resentful and like fuck society kind Mm -hmm. of idea. And that's why I like, well, only went towards like metal heads and like punk kids because like they were also getting bullied and they were always nice to me. So naturally. It's like like, anti-establishment kind of thing. Yeah. So naturally I just like gravitated with them because they were nice to me. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And then I was surrounded by boys so nobody could pick on me. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But um. Yeah, that's why I'm especially sensitive to it. So when I actually, like, got long hair and, like, Mm -hmm. 
hot in high school. Mm -hmm. So then I was especially anti-bullying. And then Mm -hmm. now we're in porn and, like, there's a lot of suicides in in porn and, like, in society now. Like, there's – we have higher suicide rates than anything. So it just makes me really – Really uneasy yeah. on a personal level. Yeah. I think I that the internet has definitely, like, and social media has, has compounded that, you know. I yeah. think a lot of people live within the validation of what they see online. And, mm-hmm. and you know, these, and especially, you know, porn girls that get a, can get a lot of hate. Yeah. And people just being really unkind because they have their, their own sexual hangups and their mm-hmm. own, you know, sexual repressions and they take it out on you because they're frustrated. Yeah. And probably a lot of them figure you don't even read the comments. Right. Or they're just trying to get your attention. Yeah. Right. You know? Exactly. But a lot of girls, like... <laughs> I mean, there's me on my bad days, but the most part, I'm just like, fuck you, whatever. But I've yeah. had my bad days where I yeah. take it seriously. Of course. And I can't imagine, like, there's really sensitive girls in the business. Sorry, I can't breathe. Okay. <laughs> there's really sensitive girls in the business, and I just, like, like fuck. Like, that sucks. You know, like, I've always had Nigel. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I don't have family. I just have Nigel. Mm-hmm. So I had that security blanket. Mm-hmm. A lot of girls don't have anyone yeah you know yeah because a lot of times when they get into porn then their family will disown them them, and then yeah and then they're kind of like rudderless and it's it's really sad Mm -hmm. yeah so that's why i've always been like anti like fuck you bro and like that's why also too a lot of people think i'm just angry and yelling at the sky sometimes Mm -hmm. when i respond to rude fans like i'll always not always but for the most part i'll respond to a fan and i'll be like you know fuck you bro like who do you think you are you're nothing you know yeah and a lot of people, almost everyone, they're like, why do you respond to that? It just brings you down to their level. And it's like, I can't handle bullying. Like, they need to know they're pieces of shit. Like, <laughs> you must know that you're wrong. <laughs> you know, I'm like stubborn. Yeah, no, I hear you. It's hard sometimes not to uh, not to react. Yeah. Um, but yeah, usually the best thing you can do is mute them because that's what I do a lot of times. I, I don't mute. even block them. I just mute them. Because if you block them, then they know that you read it. But if you mute them, then they don't really know yeah. if you ever read it. And then yeah. They think like, I'll tell them too sometimes. I'm like, I'm muting you. You can watch me, but I'll never see anything. Like, it all gets sassy sometimes. But. Yeah. 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 So you grew up um, Mormon, is that right? My mom was Mormon. Your yeah. mom was Mormon. But yeah. so did you grow up like in the church? No, uh, my mom always tried to, Mm -hmm. you know, my mom wasn't, she's not a crazy religious nut, like a Bible thumper Mm -hmm. or anything like that, but she was raised religious. She was always a part of the Mormon church and, um, she always tried, she always tried, but she didn't, she wasn't like violent or aggressive with it. You know, Mormons were always really nice to me. I was going to say Mormons, like it's kind of the big joke that they're just like really, really nice. They're the nicest people. They're like the nicest people. They believe in some weird shit, but they're very (laughs) nice. That's the thing. They're they're. It's all about being nice. Yeah. Basically. But, um, but my mom always took me to church and like Sunday school and things like that. And I was just that oddball kid who questioned everything. Mm -hmm. I was like, this doesn't make sense. What do you mean? Mm -hmm. That, that's not logical. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it became a problem. Yeah. And I think just once I got my teenage angst years and I started wearing all black and I just never stopped. She just gave she, up. I think she just was like, all right, I guess you're doing this now, you know. <laughs> and she's like, my mom's really, really like loving in the sense where she's like, you know, it's not my place to judge you. Like, that's how the Mormons are. They're like, mm-hmm. it's not our place to judge. Like, we don't have the right. We're not God. Mm-hmm. But I'm just going to love you and hopefully... You don't go to hell. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so that's how my mom's always been. She's like, you know, I don't like it, but, you know, pertaining to porn or whatever right. else I do. She's yeah. like, it's not my place to judge you. Right. So I hope you find your way. Like, she's always been like that. Yeah. But it was never a negative. Ex- I've heard a lot of negative stories with crazy religious parents, but my mom wasn't like that. But it was like always a battle Mm because she's like no 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 you need to i'm like no (laughs) i listen to misfits (laughs) (laughs) satan (laughs) what are your views on religion oh man no are you full atheist i'm not a full atheist i wouldn't say there's nothing i just feel like there's so many things that we don't know Mm -hmm. to really say anything Mm. so i would consider myself an atheist but not i don't know Maybe more agnostic? Because agnostic is like, I don't really know. I feel like more agnostic, yeah. yeah. And I'm a f- full believer in en- the full believer in energy. Okay. And there's a lot of things that we don't understand. Like, okay. we only use 10% of our brain. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. 
Like, there's so many galaxies out there. There's so many things that we don't know. Yeah. It's like, I don't know. So do you believe in, like, um, you know, kind of, like, manifestation and, you know, the energy that you put out is what you get back? Yes. Like, that kind of thing? Yeah. 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 That's why I don't, like, dabble with that black magic shit, man. <laughs> really anything, nothing like that. Yeah. <laughs> I believe in stuff like that is real. Yeah. Or at least it has some kind of effect. Right. Right. So I don't, I don't fuck with that. <laughs> it scares me a little bit. Did you? When I was a kid, I like I don't know. I was kind of obsessed with like um, witches and Wiccan, and I used yeah. to do like these weird little like rituals in my room where I would like burn pictures of like boys that I liked oh, or man. whatever. That shit always scared me. It yeah? still scares me. Yeah, I know some people in porn who are into like black magic and stuff, and I'm yeah. like, bye. <laughs> nope. So then you do believe in, like, in something. Yeah. Yeah. I believe in energy, but I just feel like I don't believe things are what people say it is, I guess. Mm -hmm. Like, as far as religion. I'm Mm -hmm. like, that doesn't, it's not logical. Right, right. Like, that's, no. Yeah. No. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, it's kind of, it's interesting. I actually, so my boyfriend was raised Catholic, and he was an altar boy and all that kind of stuff. He's not religious at all um, now, but he was raised in that, in that world. And um, we went to a friend's wedding last weekend, and it was like a full, it was a big Mexican wedding, full Catholic ceremony, this huge church. Yeah, those are intense. The the ceremony was like two hours long. There was like so much shit that went on. They like had you take the biscuit. Yeah, yeah. the Eucharist? I don't know. I don't I've, been, I've been to I'm one. like, is this the time where we eat the biscuit? He's like, the biscuit? I'm like, he's like, no, you don't have to like, you know, take the Eucharist or whatever it is. Okay. And I'm like, but I'm hungry. <laughs> and he's like, that's that wafer is not going to satisfy he's you. He's like, this is not how it goes. I'm like, is it wine? He's like, it's not alcoholic wine. I'm like, oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I won't. <laughs> um, but we were talking about it and he was like, well, and we were talking about the Catholic church and kind of like everything that's been going on with it lately and he's like you know he's like i don't i'm like well how do you feel about you know raising your kids with religion and that kind of stuff oh yeah that too. and he was like well you know i think it's it's i can see why it's you know like why my parents did that he's like you know it's it's like prepackaged morals and i'm like why yeah. can't you just teach your kids morals yeah. why does it have to come from jesus pertaining to that i'm a stepmom and Are lot, you? Yeah, and a lot of people don't know that. I've actually never said that out loud, but I'm kind of just like, fuck it. Oh, wow. So that is definitely something that your fans don't know about you. Yeah, but but pertaining to religion, I've thought about that, mm-hmm. you know, and a lot of people are friends. Like, a, nobody really knows that I'm a stepmom. Mm-hmm. Even people in porn that I've banged a million times. Mm-hmm. Like, you didn't know either. Nope. But so, Actually, you know what? Now that I think about it. It makes sense now. I, I do know. Yeah. I did know. I just didn't put two and two together. That's what everybody says. So like, I know but, Nigel has a daughter, and I'm yeah. like... Yeah, duh. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I'm a stepmom. So it's like I always um, – her mom – because I'm not a real mother. Her mom, like, raises her, like, wants to take her to church and all this mm-hmm. stuff. And me and Nigel are anti that. We're mm-hmm. totally anti-church. Like, mm-hmm. let her find her own way. Right. You know what I mean? We're very not pushy people. But mm-hmm. I'm also, like, anti-religion to, like, the, the most extent. Mm-hmm. So I've had my issues – with that, like, I didn't really know how to handle it. And, like, my daughter has asked me, like, some questions. Like, what does this mean? What does that mean? And I'm, like, I always try to avoid it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, I don't want to be negative and hateful. Yeah, so especially like, if that's what her fuck. mom – if her mom wants to raise her in that faith, you yeah. don't want to, like, contradict that and, like, create yeah. drama. But it's also, like, she's asking me questions. So I feel like I'm, like, oh, it's me all over again, questioning everything, you know. Yeah. And it's, like, I don't want to say, oh, go to church because your mom said so. And I'm, like, well, yeah. what do you think? Yeah. I always try to help her come to her own – conclusion conclusion i guess even though she's a child but still yeah and then we still like we teach her like the basics like you don't hurt animals like the whole thing you know be a decent person and she's very big on like me and her mom are really great co-parenters even though we wouldn't get along naturally Mm -hmm. at all but Mm -hmm. i feel like we're great me and her are more on team than we are with nigel oh it's weird yeah yeah that's interesting so we co-parent a lot so like we text each other all the time and I'll text her. I'm like, she's saying this. And she'll text me like, I'm not doing this. This is your daughter now. <laughs> you know, it's really, it's really odd. That is interesting. Yeah. So with the, the religion thing, I totally get it. I'm like, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. I had a boyfriend whose mom like took him literally to all the different like churches. And so he could like try all the religions so mm-hmm. that he could make his own decision he ended up just not picking any of them. Yeah. Like, oh, fuck this. Yeah, like, this is weird. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm more, I mean, I'm a f- firm believer in energy. I don't know why I'm stuttering a lot, but 
I did read. <laughs> I did read um, a lot into Levian Satanism, mm-hmm. but that made more sense to me than anything else because it's not you're not worshiping you're not actually worshiping a Satan mm-hmm. or a any kind of deity. Are you talking at about all. like the Church of Satan? Church of Satan, yes. yeah, which is actually nothing like what people think it it's is not at all. It's not. It's so, literally more about like. Um, isn't it more just like belie- yeah, self worship and believing mm-hmm. in yourself rather than believing in this other entity? Exactly, like you worship yourself and your own existence, but you don't. The thing is, you're not supposed to hurt anybody else in the process. Like, right. You don't kill people. You don't kill animals unless it's for food. You right. Know I mean? You're not a cruel human being. Right. 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 You right. just worship yourself and not right. any other entity. How did that? How did they like tie that? I can't remember. I could listen to a whole podcast on it. Oh, it's so um, much information. I can't even. <laughs> I know there's so much information, but I can't even remember why they ended up calling it like Church of Satan. Anyways, I think it was like to change the whole like. Oh, I can't, you know, I, yeah, I know what you're talking about, and yeah. I can't even put it into words either. Yeah, maybe we won't, wow. like, actually try to, like, because I could just sit here and, like, try to sound knowledgeable and spit out all these completely incorrect information. Yeah, I don't want to say it wrong And then I'll just have either. all these people emailing me, like, this is completely fucking wrong. Oh, yeah. So absolutely. I'll tell you what, guys. You guys go Google the Church of Satan. Figure yeah, that shit what? out on yourself. Don't listen to us. Yeah, no, We don't know what okay. we're talking about. <laughs> I know, like, the basics. Yeah. You know, but I don't, I don't, I don't know the whole deep history yeah, I can't. Re- I can't retain all that knowledge. <laughs> well, I read it, but I can't remember a lot of it. But they do have a Twitter, and mm-hmm. they respond, and they're hilarious. Sometimes I'll troll you back. Oh, really? They actually they responded to me a few times, and I freaked out. <laughs> <laughs> I fangirled so hard. I was like, they noticed me. Because <laughs> like somebody, there's actually a new porn girl. Bless her heart. I don't even know her name, but I said something on a thread, and she was on it, and she started yelling at me like. There is a Jesus. Like, she went full-blown, like, oh, religious on me. And I was like, you are also a porn girl. Don't why are you doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I got sassy back. I didn't attack her. I was just like, I'd, I'd rather be a part of the Church of Satan. And I yeah. tag them. And I always tag them because yeah. I, I kind of want people to, like, know that they exist. Right, like, right, right. here's a plug. Go figure this out. Yeah. But they responded. And they're like, sometimes dreams come true. And they sent me a heart. And I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> they said <laughs> The Church of Satan responded to me. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I love you. And then my fans, they're like, today is a good day. Church of Satan responded to Katrina. And I was like, I know. <laughs> Something happens. <laughs> but anyways. Oh, my God. They have a Twitter. <laughs> All right. Guys, go check them out. Church of Satan. Yeah. <laughs> Katrina, thank you so much for coming on. Thank we you. are actually going to do separate from this podcast. You guys will only be able to watch on my Patreon. I'm going to ask her some fan questions, so there there is a little more to come. Yay. You're you're not free yet. <laughs> <laughs> but um, as for the rest of you, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Plug your plugs. Yay! Upcoming movies. Yeah. Your Twitter, Instagram, all that stuff. Uh, my Twitter handle is kj underscore fetish model. Uh, my Instagram actually got banned like a few weeks ago. So currently I do not have an Instagram. And if you want to find out where my new Instagram is, go to my Twitter, okay. KJ underscore fetish model. That is my only Twitter. Do you think that you might get your Instagram back? I hope so. Is this the first time you've been banned? Yes. Oh, well, okay. in a long time, yes. Okay. Because a lot of times the girls get it back. Yeah, I'm hoping. But it's been a few weeks, so I don't, I'm scared. It could take a while. I remember Dana DeArmond, it was... Took her a while to yeah. get hers back. So there's that. Um, my website, um, meetkatrinaj.com if you want to buy some stuff. Ooh, what are, you, what are you selling? Panties, all kinds oh. of stuff. Oh. Everybody loves parties. panties. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, she's a contract girl for Evil Angel. Oh, I'm sorry. I totally just got lost. Yes. Check out my, uh, my, uh, my showcase, Addicted to Black. Because it's really hot. And I lost, actually came so hard that I lost sensation in my fingertips. I went like this. Like I was like really? shaking. Yeah. What scene was that? With with Jackson Rob. Uh, they okay. fucked me so hard that I was like, inca- I was like incapacitated. I was like, <laughs> like, and Darko was like, you got fucked today. I was like, yeah. He's like, no, you got, you got fucked. I was like, I did. I really did. <laughs> like I sat, I laid on the floor for about 15 minutes after the scene. <laughs> I didn't move. That's when you know it was a good day. It was a good day. Yeah. So buy that movie. All right. (laughs) Everyone buy that movie. Check her out on 
Twitter, but not Instagram. <laughs> at least not right now. Yeah. And you can follow me at Holly Randall on Instagram and on Twitter. And like I said before, you can go to my Patreon, patreon.com slash Holly Randall Unfiltered. Um, support the podcast, be eligible for all kinds of cool perks, and um, watch this little fan Q&A that we're going to do. Yay. Okay. See you guys next week.